ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೇದಾಂತ ದರ್ಶನ ಟು ಸಮನ್ವಯಾತ್ ಟ means that to means but saman vayat means because it is the main purport but that brahman is to be known only from the scriptures and not independently by any other means is established because it is the main purport of all vedanta texts well again i would have to bring up the issue here that brahman can be known by other means if one is so fortunate as to have a self-realized guru or if one actually realizes brahman for oneself but in the beginning it's certainly true that brahman can only be known through the vedanta scriptures that is the advaita scriptures now in shankaracharya's purport he brings up all kinds of very sophisticated purva pakshan arguments mainly from the purva mimamshas uh having to do with the fact that brahman cannot be desired nor can it be shunned brahman is the innermost self of all therefore there's nothing we can do about it <laughs> we are already brahman we are always brahman and we are nothing but brahman so there is no effort there is no action that can bring us to realize brahman either we know it or we don't and as a consequence the the mimamshas argue that the scriptures have nothing to say about brahman and they certainly can't help us realize brahman because the scriptures can only talk about knowledge or action and realizing brahman is not knowledge nor action so the scriptures whatever they have to say about brahman is basically irrelevant <laughs> that's a pretty sophisticated argument today's neo advaitins would be more likely to bring up the famous quote uh from lao tzu that uh the dao that can be spoken is not the true dao uh -huh. or even better he who knows does not speak he who speaks does not know mm, yes very deep but it's bullshit and the reason it's bullshit is that those people in those times and places were speaking from a different tradition and they were speaking in a context where everyone had access to the natural world not like today where people ride around in a little air conditioned bubble in a car or home and have no contact with nature everything they see and touch is built by human beings huh no in those days people were much closer to reality <laughs> closer to nature and simply by experiencing nature without the verbal mind coming in between one could realize very easily nowadays it's much harder the mind and ego have become much stronger much better defended more complex and so on so in this day we need scriptures we need scriptures to point the way yes it's true that words cannot describe transcendence directly of course but words can say this is how you realize transcendence and more importantly they can say this is what transcendence is not 
And so there are many passages throughout the Vedas saying that the Brahman is not this, Brahman is not that. Brahman is not a thing at all. It doesn't really exist in the same way that, let's say, this world exists. Actually, Brahman is very similar to a mirror. That whatever you put in front of a mirror, the mirror simply reflects it without adopting any of its qualities. And in the same way, Brahman, awareness, simply reflects whatever you put in front of it without taking on any of its qualities, remaining just what it is. And what is it anyway? <laughs> I discovered this accidentally and spontaneously uh, in 2000 and uh, what was it? 2006, I think, about this time of year, actually, January. I was living in Mexico City and every day I would go for a long walk usually wind up at one of the big parks. So I was sitting there in the park and I was contemplating the question, how is it possible for consciousness? Well, the way I framed that question at that time was, how is it possible for the soul, which is pure consciousness, nothing but, to be aware of the material world? Because material being, uh, matter, and all the conditions that go along with it are completely different and alien from <laughs> pure consciousness, which is the soul. So how is it possible actually to be conscious of the material world at all? <laughs> and the more I thought about this, the more blissful I became. <laughs> And uh, the, even today, now, thinking about it, it's really miraculous and amazing and wonderful that we can be conscious of materiality at all. Because we are completely different. We are pure consciousness. And then I began to think, even more amazing than that is the fact that we are self-aware. We are aware of our own existence as consciousness directly without any intermediary senses mind body or seeing its reflection or result in something else we are directly aware of the fact that we are conscious try it some night when you're falling asleep huh? and it's very quiet there's no noise coming it's dark. Huh? Maybe you cover your eyes even. So there's no light at, at all. No sound at all. Huh? And what are you going to perceive? Well, you're going to first find is there's all kinds of internal sounds. And there's all kinds of internal lights as well. That is, if, if you're objective, if you're simply aware without trying to put any conditions on it. You're going to see and hear all kinds of things, even though there's nothing to see or hear, <laughs> isn't it? And why is that? Well, the mere fact that we are conscious creates certain phenomena in the material world. Huh? Just like you may not be able to see a fish swimming close to the surface of the water, but you can see the wake. You can see the waves caused by the fish's swimming. So in the same way, maybe we can't perceive the, the soul or consciousness directly, but we can perceive its effects on the body, on the mind, on the perceptual space around us. But take that even further. Huh? deliberately turn your attention away from the mind and senses. Huh? It can be done. Yogis do it all the time. It's called pratyahara. 
Pratyahara means to withdraw the attention from the senses. And so by doing that, one is left alone in silence, in darkness, uh, with only the self, only the pure consciousness. And guess what? There are still all kinds of phenomena. You can experience it for yourself. The point is you should experience it. <laughs> when you meditate, don't just think or think of some form or some mantra or don't don't put your mind on some thing even a mental object but disengage your attention from the mind and the body and turn it elsewhere if you're successful in doing this you will discover a new dimension within you'll discover the dimension of pure awareness and awareness of awareness. Yes, it takes some time for most people. Huh? It takes time for the mind to settle. It takes time to focus the mind on one point. It takes time to disengage the mind even from that point and to turn it away from its habitual objects. Huh? It takes some time. It takes some discipline also. There are various methods, but not to get caught up in the different methods because the methods are not the thing we're looking for. What we're looking for is independent confirmation of the existence of Brahman as pure awareness, huh? that you are that. Tatvamasi. Remember, that in the Vedas and Vedanta is a code word for Brahman. So you want to see that you, as pure awareness, are reflecting even your own self. And you can see this. Huh? When the mind is concentrated, you begin to perceive light. And this light has no apparent source. Uh, and if you go deeper into the matter, you will find that this light is actually you. <laughs> Simply being reflected off of various internal objects in the mind. And if the mind becomes very pure and very clean and very smooth and quiet, you can see almost like the reflection of the sun. Uh, this is why the scripture uses this example in several places that the sun may be reflected in many different puddles of water uh, all the reflections have similar properties to the image of the sun but none of them are the sun so similarly our own awareness the illumination of our consciousness is projected into the material mind and can be reflected back uh, to give us some idea of what we are. But in the end, when we realize what we are, huh, we're going to laugh. We're going to laugh because it's so obvious. <laughs> Once you get it, it's like, duh, I'm just pure awareness. And awareness of awareness. I'm aware that I'm aware. And that is the greatest miracle. Just think of it. How is it possible? How is it even? <laughs> huh? Just stand in the glory of the fact of, that you are aware. And you are aware that you are aware. And in that very moment, you have realized Brahman. Om Tat Sat Om Harihi Om